93.6 Global Radio. So we've made it over the border from Spain into Gibraltar, pretty much hassle-free. We've arrived at Comic-Con 2018. It's the first time I've been to an event like this. I'm really curious to find out what's going inside. I know the Max Grodin chick from Star Trek is in there. We'll be trying to grab a word with him. Amy Richardson from Game of Thrones as well. And Ross uh, Hennessy from Game of Thrones and the Bastard Executioner. Let's see if we can have a chat, take a look, find out what's going on. Taking a look around, this little fella was clearly an instant hit. But not with everyone. It was the first afternoon of Comic Con and the show had only just opened, but already there were people looking around, chatting, and showing off some fantastic costumes. The first star we ambushed had only just arrived. He'd not even had time to get to his hotel and get changed before we seized the opportunity to chat with Max Grodenchik, who played Rom in Deep Space Nine. <laughs> so Max, is this your first time in Gibraltar? My very first time in Gibraltar, yeah. Have you had a chance to, to have a look around yet, or have you just arrived? I haven't even been here 24 hours, I don't think. Uh, no, we had a tour this morning and met by Annie and uh, she was fabulous and the tour was absolutely fabulous i could have listened to her all day well i feel like we should apologize you've arrived in the south of spain where the weather is legendary except <laughs> for today <laughs> how many events like this do you normally do in a year it varies this year is the uh, 25th anniversary of the debut of ds9 so it's the 25th anniversary or so Anniversary years I do a little more, non-anniversary years I do a little less. It just, it just depends what's going on. Well, we told Deep Space Nine, um, absolutely love the show. When you auditioned for it, what process did you have to go through How to get doing, the part? January of 1990, I, I worked on a third season episode of Next Generation called Captain's Holiday. Yeah. So I played a Ferengi there, his name was Sovac. Uh, Sovac, Sovac. Um, Oh, I never had to pronounce it. <laughs> so, uh, and then, and then two years later, I did another episode called "The Perfect Mate," and uh, at that time, the uh, head of makeup, Star Trek, all all Star Trek makeup, his name was Michael Westmore. He advised me that my agents should look out for a, a new series that would have a series regular for Ranger. And so my agent did that. And I don't think it was really. I don't think, know if she had to do that because I think I was on, they thought of me and they brought me in to read and the uh, first time I read it was uh, it was really tough and I didn't think I'd be called back and then three weeks later they called me back and there were very few people there the second time and uh, yeah, Armin Shimmerman was there and uh, uh, I was done first, I sat on the steps of uh, uh, the Gower steps of Paramount Studio and, was upset because I didn't think I had done so well. And then Armin came out and he asked me what was the matter. And I said, I don't think I did that well. He said, I, he said, I don't think I did well either, but it's between you and me for the role. Thought he knew one of the producers, he knew the casting director and he had him in. He said, uh, because we were the only two short people in the room. So, uh, that was my introduction to how smart Armin is. The, the, the species that, that your character was, a Ferengi, they, they weren't particularly nice, they were quite villainous, yet you made your character very lovable and relatable. They were supposed to, originally the Ferengi were supposed to be enemies and uh, they were supposed to be very tough, ferocious little guys with, with jagged teeth that they, 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 that would bite you and not let, you know, bite you and not let go. Um, when they saw the makeup and the orange rubber, it was hard to mistake them for someone as uh, someone as dangerous as uh, Klingons, you know, it was uh, the, the makeup made them com comical, I think. So, so they never got to be, in that first episode of the Ferengi on Next Generation, they have the whips. You know? I like that episode. But, um, yeah, the, 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 enemy, the Ferengi as enemy didn't really work, I don't think. So they, they evolved into, uh, or devolved <laughs> to, um, uh, just kind of comic relief, and, and then, let me say, and then when we had next gen, uh, when we did Deep Space Nine, then the Frankie uh, Armin as Quark as a series regular, you get to you get to know you get to know more about them. You know, they're just not one thing. They're you know, Quark is many different things, as is Ron, as is Nog. So. The sets that you filmed on, on screen, that they look spectacular. Did you have a, a favorite part of the set where you'd be filming? Was there someone that, that felt really good for you? I don't think anybody's ever asked me that question before. No 
Nobody's ever asked me that question. Nobody's ever asked me that question. Before. Favorite part of the set. I really like. Well, I like the promenade because at the end of the promenade there was food. Uh, so real food, not just promenade, not fake food. Um, I think my. I was. Well, I. I you. <laughs> In Quark's Bar, you can go up a round uh, series of steps and get up to the second level. And I'm not sure, but you may be, there might have even been a third level. And I liked going up there. Not, uh, not to shoot. Well, th they would shoot me upstairs from downstairs. But uh, I, just, I just, it was a nice place to get away. It was quiet, you know. But I, I liked the promenade. Do you have any souvenirs at home from your time on the show? Did you take anything away from the sets? Well, we had two great prop guys, uh, um, and, and uh, I asked them, I said, when can I take stuff? And they said, the day after we stopped shooting, you can take stuff. So I went down there the day after we stopped shooting, everything was gone. <laughs> Nobody, I was the only person to listen to the prop guys. Everybody else went ahead and, and, and took stuff. Everything was gone. So, I don't have anything. I, I had my teeth because they didn't fit anybody else, and uh, I had not not much else. A couple of heads, a couple of face pieces that I wore. That's it. Yeah. Since Deep Space Nine, has that opened up doors for you to pursue other avenues uh, and things that you really wanted to do? Not since Deep Space Nine, but while I was on Deep Space Nine, I think I was a fairly relatively busy actor. So. Mm -hmm. Since then, uh, no. I think when you're working on a series, people really, that's a good thing, and people really uh, want you in their show, but when it's over... Is there anything that you're involved with? When it's with? over, you're old news, you know. Is there anything that you're involved with at the moment that you'd like to talk about? Well, I'm waiting to do a movie. We live in Austria, and I'm waiting to do a movie there uh, about the astronomer Tycho Brahe. Uh, so, so, I'm very excited about that. Uh, I think it's called, I think the name of the movie actually is Tycho Brahe, uh, Danish astronomer. Sorry, I just, how can I, how can I forget? Uh, there is a company in Los Gatos, California, near San Jose, called Cryptic Studios. Cryptic Studios uh, has a subdivision called Star Trek Online, and uh, they do a series of games, and I just, well, I was in, I'm here today. Last week I was in, in um, Dortmund, Germany at a 25th anniversary convention. And the week before that, I was in uh, Los Gatos, California, recording my voice, Rom's voice, for uh, their next video game, uh, which I don't know the name of and I should, but it's online. You can go to Star Trek Online. And it's, it's public. Uh, you can find out what it is there. So, uh, yeah, I'm very excited about when that becomes a final product, trying to play the game. That sounds like a lot of fun. Will you play the game yourself? I will try to play the game. I don't know. I've never, I don't think I've ever played a video game before online. What are they? Is it a video game? It's an I've, online game. Yeah. I don't know the lingo. I don't know the terminology. Thing, so. Yeah, I've tried. I'm also not great at them. But this video game has more Star Trek actors than any other game so far. So we'll see. I hope it's a good one. I hope I, I, hope I did my part. Okay. We'll see. Max, thank you so much for your time today. We'll let you get back to the Comic Con. Thank you. And wish you the very best of luck. Those thank are the you. questions you wanted to ask, yeah? Absolutely, thank okay. you. Okay, okay. Thank you all. Well, the weather's not holding up, but the Comic Con event is just starting to get busy. As we take a look around, in here, it looks like a celebrity autograph signing tent. Let's go and take a look, see what we can find. In here there were anime artists, craftsmen, and of course, a few celebrities. The first one we spotted was Amy Richardson, who you'll remember from Game of Thrones. Amy, welcome to Gibraltar. Is this your Thank first you. time here? Yes, it is. Yeah. Are you planning to spend a lot of time here, or just for the so comment? So I arrived yesterday, but I was kind of a bit of a zombie, because my flight was at 7 in the morning, I got picked up at 3, so I didn't really do anything yesterday. And then I got the three days here, and I'm here for a little bit on Monday. I imagine most of the interest with you being here is, of course, going to be Game of Thrones. Yes. What was it like being part of that? It was kind of mental. Um, because when I saw, I did the first two seasons in the pilot. So um, nobody really thought when we started out, nobody, there was no inkling that it was going to turn out to be what it did. Um, so we were all just kind of chilled out of it. And it you know, it's pretty cool, but it's not going to be what it is. Um, so then it started gradually.
gradually gradually becoming something and I remember typing in game into my laptop one day when I was about 12 and the first result was Game of Thrones and I was like, oh, it's Game of Thrones! Um, so yeah, it was kind of a weird gradual process and then all of a sudden everybody knew about it. Yeah, it was strange but good. And the show has filmed in some spectacular locations. Uh, where have you been with the show when you were filming? Well, I filmed all of my indoor scenes in Belfast, which is just up the road for me. So that was handy. And then I filmed in Croatia too, in the second season for my going away scenes and for some other outdoor scenes. Uh, so that was, yeah, I got just those two locations. As an actress, how difficult is it for you to relate to that kind of a world? I mean, it's... I guess I was still at an age when I first started, because I was 10 in the pilot. Um, so I was sort of still at an age where that was quite easy for me to slip into sort of a playing type way. And then I guess it was quite good for me to have started with that base, because then it was still easy for me even when I grew out of that. And it's, it's still, they're still, even though it's a fantasy setting, they're still very human characters. So still, that's why it's so popular, I think, because they are experiences boring such important human emotions and things. Um, so it was fairly easy, yeah. Is there anything you're working on at the moment that you like to tell us about? I have just filmed a music video, okay. which is coming out this weekend, um, with Marcy Phonics, who is a London-based crime artist, and it's called um, Liability. And it's Liberties, not liabilities. Liberties. Sorry, Marcy. Um, and it's about um, the Windrush scandal, really, in um, the UK. And it's got, it's got this No Blacks No Dogs No Irish theme, which was um, something that used to be on like a sign outside pubs and stuff in London and in England um, about 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Um, was to my mum and dad saw them when they were at uni and stuff. So I'm there as an Irish representative of the video. So yeah, that's pretty cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Well, we'll keep an eye out for that and we'll put a link to it as well. I don't want to keep you from your fans any longer. Amy, thank you so much for your thank time you today. Thank you so much, Thank you. Too. Thank you. Here's Clem So, who's been in just about every sci-fi show you could name, and Ross O'Hennessy, who played the Lord of Bones in Game of Thrones. Uh, your accent, where are you from? I'm from South Wales. Okay, uh, two of the guys on our team here are, are going to be flying the Welsh flag right now. Uh, Martin and Gary are going to be very pleased with that. South Wales. Uh, uh, do we mean Shannon Cabraig? Ah, uh, not Welsh speakers. Now, now, now there'll be a fight now between us because there's those that speak Welsh. Where are both in South Wales? Where, I'm from Neath. Oh, you Neath? You should speak Welsh in Neath, right? I've lived in two places. I knew more than Tadiga. I know it very well. My family were all come to Leary and to Leary boys. So yeah. 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 So the Game of Thrones experience. Yeah, it's like it's like away from yeah. Wales, <laughs> move from <laughs> Wales, play Game of Thrones. Um, what was that like for you? What's I um, I'd read all the books before I was asked to play my role, and I just finished doing a TV show called Da Vinci's Demons, and they said Do you want to play the character of Lord of Bones, and I quickly went through the through the books and I reread and I was like this is a great character, um, and then we came to shoot it, um, and. The way my character dies in the books is different to how he dies in the TV show. So it was it was amazing to be in the in, to be in, in the, the experience of Game of Thrones, and it was a fantastic thing. Um, but just I just wish they'd stuck to the books for that death because the death in the books was fantastic. The death in the TV show was still fantastic, but in the books it was just a tiny bit better. That's my personal feeling. When you read a book, you have in your mind what what the characters are like. If you're able to bring that character to life, was it how you visualised it? Um, I don't really know because I think I think the Lord of Bones in the books is a very different different character. So in in the Wildlings, the, the, you know, you have the King of the North, then you have the Lord of Bones, who's the General of the North, and and the other characters are sort of tribal leaders underneath it. But in the TV show, they kind of raised characters like Tormund and made Tormund more important. So I think I think really, although um, in in your mind, you're always going to picture a story differently to how it's put onto film, and I think that's the big problem you're always going to have if you're a bit of a book nerd like I am and you read something first like all the Stephen King books those people who read Stephen King then see the films it's always never the same and, and I, I love Game of Thrones Game of Thrones is fantastic I love the TV show um, but I, I was a bit of a Game of Thrones nerd so it was, it was hard for me sometimes to change over from the books to the TV show 
and then the Bastard Executioner. Yes. What a series that was! Yeah, yeah, and, and uh, an ill-fated TV show. Yeah. It was it was set up massive production. We had Ed Sheeran sing the title song. We had Ed Sheeran in it. Huge actors in it. Um, but just sadly, it, it, it lived one year. It lived one year. And then when you're making a TV show about an execution of medieval times, yeah. how do you go? I need to ask you my final question. Yes. Do you have any Game of Thrones souvenirs at home? There is nothing you can take from Game of really? Thrones. Everything is signed in and everything is signed out. It's like, it's like oh, when they did Harry Potter, no one's allowed to take a wand. And the same thing with Game of Thrones. Anything you take, you can sell on eBay, so everything's really controlled. Tightly controlled. Well, Ross, I won't keep you from your army of fans who are waiting for the Pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Great to meet you. Take care. Hey, Welsh guys. At the Comic Con event, there was an auditorium where the guests were giving talks, but time didn't allow us to check that out. Also, lots of stands displaying memorabilia, set in bits and pieces related to the various guests at the show. I really enjoyed our trip to Comic Con, and I'm certainly looking forward to next year already. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and leave a comment below. Thank you for watching.